Jumbo and good morning everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Safari Mac in Africa, where I'm your guide and your host helping you make connections to the wild. For those who are joining me from last week's episode, thank you once again for tuning into my videos as well as checking out my Facebook page for information as well as hitting the like and subscribe button. But for those who are joining me for the very first time, welcome. If you haven't done so though, be sure to check out my other videos, which you'll find the links to down in the description below, along with my email address for those who have questions about animals in general. And be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you can stay tuned for more information as well as special updates or announcements. And be sure to check out my Facebook page for information every other day or so. Now, for those who are joining me from last week, you know that we are still continuing our expedition in Africa to uncover the group of animals called the Big Five. Today, we meet our second animal in our expedition, so we say goodbye to the leopard and we meet the African rhinoceros, or rhino for short. Now, for those who, now for those who may know about rhinos, we know that they can be dangerous animals, but when we're done with our little journey, maybe we can see another side to these magnificent creatures. Let's begin. First of all, let's start with their families. Believe it or not, rhinos are actually a little bit more related to zebras, horses, or tapirs. They're more related to tapirs than anything, but not by their looks or certain bits, but believe it or not, these are part of a group of animals that are called parasodactylas, meaning odd-toed ungulates. For those who don't know what ungulate means, be sure to check out my Facebook page later so that you can know information know about what it means and what these animals, what makes them special. Now, in terms of their history, rhinos have been around, the earliest rhino ancestor started around 55 million years ago, and there have been many different kind of rhino-like creatures, but in the end, only nine were thought to have originally made it all the way to around 14,000 to 12,000 years ago, with only a few of the modern day species left alive today. Now, in between, if you want to be specific, 26 million years ago, meet one of these ancestors. This is called Indracotherium. This was, a, this was a rhino that didn't really have a horn and was really trying to be, in a way, a giraffe. But what was even more different, these guys were big. They were said thought to be 15 feet tall and weigh as much as eight modern rhinos, or possibly 20 tons. But perhaps the most famous of all extinct rhino species would have to be the woolly rhino of the, of the iconic ice ages. Yes, not just one ice age. Believe it or not, there's actually been more than one. We'll get to that in another video. And also, if you want to know more about it today, be sure to check out my Facebook page. Now, the woolly rhino was said to have, originate, was said to have lived around for a long time up until as recently as 14,000 to 12,000 years ago due to climate change, where they roamed the vast Asian, European, and Eurasian frozen grasslands. Now, today's modern rhino oh, it would appear roughly around 10 million years ago, but by 4 to 5 million years ago, the white and the black rhino would eventually diverge and evolve their own family bloodlines. Now, let's talk about their habitat, lifestyle, and as well as what they eat. Now, in terms of where they live, rhinos, you can only find, the African rhinos, only be found along African grasslands, or grassy plains and open woodlands, which we often call savannas. But now, when it comes to social, the white rhino actually takes the crown, because believe it or not, they're actually a lot more social than the black rhinoceros. In fact, a group of rhinos is what you would often sometimes call a crash. So these crashes can include anywhere from seven to around 14 individual rhinos, which can be comprised mostly of females and their calves, while bull rhinos would prefer to go it alone. But like I said, the black rhino, not so much of a social cat. In fact, they would prefer to be living completely on their own or only coming together if they're going to breed or if it's a mother with her calf. Now, believe it or not though, people often get these two rhinos mixed. So here, I thought I'd show you the differences. First of all, the white rhino is a grazer. As you can see, it has a big, broad lip, which is perfect for grazing low to the ground in finding grass as well as grains. 
in which they need to find around 120 pounds of food a day just to sustain their massive bulk, while the black rhinoceros has, has a bit of a more pointed lip, which actually can act in a way as a hand. This is what gives us the term prehensile. So they have a prehensile lip, which is perfect for finding bushes, leaves, twigs, and branches from trees that have fallen to the ground in which they need to find around 110 pounds of food a day just to sustain their bulk. But another major important difference would be their horns. Now, as you can see here, the white rhino's first horn is a lot more longer than the second horn on its face. But the black rhino's, while it's a tiny bit shorter, it's roughly around the same length. Now, let's talk a little bit about their place in human cultures. Now, unfortunately, the rhino has been always been seen as the biggest, baddest, tough guy. He's always going to charge everything and just pulverize anything to the ground. Truth is, rhinos really don't deserve that whole tough guy reputation. We need to remember that every animal that has been given the kind of aggressive or always dangerous reputation, like let's just say bears or sharks, or in this case, the rhino, they don't always deserve that. They really only fight or do all these things when they have to. In the rhino's case, it's really because, probably because of their eyesight. As we know, rhinos have extremely poor eyesight. In fact, that's, that's really the biggest reason why they would even charge in the first place. They can't see you from far away. It's only when they get up really close that they realize, oh, oh, it's just another human, or it's a car. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. That was a zebra. So now that's how we've always displayed it in the Western Hemisphere, in, especially in pop media culture, like maybe Jum in Jumanji with the rhinos that were constantly charging through the town or that were trying to act as man eaters. That's just not true. They're really not that dangerous. They're not really dangerous. While we need to respect them, we need to remember that they only do what they do just to survive. But now in Africa, while they have also been feared, they've also been respected creatures. In fact, I'd like to present you a little history. This is the kingdom of Map Mapungubwe, which was around from 1075 AD to 1220 AD. This was a magnificent kingdom back in the Middle Ages of where you would find today southern Great Zimbabwe. This was actually located at the confluence of the Sashi and Limpopo rivers. Now, this kingdom actually had a relic or an artifact that celebrated these magnificent two-horned animals. This is the golden rhino of Mapungubwe, which served as an emblem of sacred leadership in a class-based society. This was originally made out of gold, of wood, but had sheets of gold pasted over it. And then later on, this would be discovered by archaeologists in 1932 that were stationed at the University of Pretoria in Mapungubwe Hill. Now, this artifact really was a symbol of like the wealth that South Africa really did have to enjoy back in the Middle Ages. For more information about the kingdom of Mapungubwe, be sure to check out my Facebook page, as well as be sure to check out the link that I'll leave down in the description below so you can learn more for yourself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as always, I'm afraid that's all the time I have for this week, so be sure to join me next week as we uncover part two of the rhino. And as always, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Be sure to check out my other videos. Be sure to tell all your friends and family about my series. And be sure to check out my Facebook page. And as always, send me, send me an email if you have questions about animals. Also, stay tuned later on this week for a special announcement or a special update. Until, ne until next Saturday, this is Safari Mac. I'll see you all out there in the wilds of Africa.